Before a game hits stores, there have been plenty of occasions developers have lied to you. Ever seen the text in-engine footage in a trailer? It means this video is made with the same software, but it does not mean the game will look like this. Some people call it marketing, others call it lying. And of course, developers often promise things that they are unable to deliver in the end. This video is all about those moments. Here are 10 examples of game developers lying to us. My name is Peter Molyneux. I'm uh, the designer at uh, Lionhead Studios. Um... Over the years, Peter Molyneux has told tons of things to gamers and journalists that in the end just didn't turn out to be part of his game. The very first Fable game is loved by many. A living, breathing world was promised. He said, I can tell you definitely that there is absolutely an acorn, and it does absolutely grow into a tree, and it is actually part of the story now. We decided we got into so much trouble over acorns and trees that we are going to make it part of the main thread of the story in Fable 2. Even though Fable is a great game, we all know you can't watch a tree grow while you are adventuring in Fable. Dreams were shattered for sure. <laughs> I don't want to promise anything. I just want to deliver the glory of the old days in the new format of today's world. Just to get it over with, we will mention Peter Molyneux just one more time. After leaving Microsoft, he started a Kickstarter project named Goddess. It was supposed to revive the God simulation genre. You would be a god and would need to shape your world full of believers that would adore you. In the end, the project was very underwhelming and full of microtransactions following the dreadful pay-to-win philosophy. Goddess was dead even before it launched properly, and it most certainly did not revive the God Simulator genre. It did steal money from over 17,000 crowdfunding backers, though. I mean, I made some horrendous mistakes. I apologize to everyone for the mistakes that I've made, and you know you have been harsh, and please continue to be harsh. And the key here is we want to become Duke Nukem and we want to save the motherfucking world. And we want to go through the wildest adventure known to man. When a game is in development for over a decade, you would expect the result to be something decent. Uh, no, what am I doing? Duke Nukem Forever was announced a long time ago as a top-of-the-line shooter that would blow everybody away. Well, it did blow, but not in a positive sense. Gearbox Software presented it as the arrival of the greatest game ever. But in the end, we got a game that was clearly a bunch of levels glued together. I've got balls of fail. For a game people worked on for more than 10 years, Duke Nukem Forever was a big disappointment. And Mr. Pitchford clearly lied to us about the game. Uh, it's been evolved and iterated and improved and iterated and improved over the years. Oh, thanks, Duke. <laughs> that guy was a douche. And as we look out the destroyed windows, we can see the gnarled landscape of LV-426. When a publisher and a game studio work together on a game, they need to make sure they are on the same page. Sega and Gearbox clearly weren't. Sega presented the game a lot prettier than it actually was during E3 in 2012. Anonymous sources later stated that the demo was made for the most badass PC out there. The Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 would never be able to run it, and therefore, the graphics had to be simplified. Gearbox outsourced the development for six years, and progress was hardly made due to the different visions and complex decision-making. In the end, Gearbox took back development and remade the game in nine months. And they told us this was the most authentic and badass alien game ever. Aliens Colonial Marines is immersive. It's fast, scary, frightening, badass, badass, dark. I've been working with Activision for so long, I don't have to school them in what skateboarding is or how to represent it well. So working together is pretty seamless. After several years of silence surrounding the Tony Hawk games, the Pro Skater series would make its great comeback in 2015. It would bring back the old school days from Pro Skater on the PS1, but it would be modernized for the modern consoles. It sounded awesome and everyone was hyped. Finally, we'd be doing those amazing skate combos again. Activision promised a new era of skating, but it delivered one of the worst games in the series. This skate game was so bad that its main attraction are ridiculous bugs and glitches. This is not the new era of gaming you promised us, Activision. 
how does BioWare feel about the response from the fans? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's a that's a loaded a loaded gun question. Every game in the Mass Effect series has been amazing, and all your choices matter. It was supposed to end in an epic conclusion that's unique for everybody. It was a bold statement from BioWare, but one that was maintained during the entire trilogy. And then there was the ending of Mass Effect 3. You will get one of three endings based on choices made in the last bit of the game. So now what? That depends on you. What do you mean? Sure, the series as a whole is still very awesome, but that unique ending we were expecting never came as everybody basically got a slightly different version of the same ending. Don't get us wrong, we love the Mass Effect series, but the consequences of our actions were greatly exaggerated by the developers. Clearly, the road we took was more awesome than its destination. This is the galaxy, and every one of those stars is its own solar system. So it's like 18 quintillion planets. Discover an endless universe with a diversity never seen in video games. Every planet is randomly generated, so no game will ever be the same. Hello Games promised us we could explore planets, step into our spacecraft, and fly to the next. And we could, but the diversity in planets was not as great as expected. Above all, the studio kept saying the game had multiplayer options that were just not there. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Can you grief other players? <laughs> A little bit. You could encounter other players. The reality is, the likelihood of that is tiny. Two Twitch streamers found each other on the first day and proved you couldn't actually see other players in the game. And nobody ever found those huge dinosaurs from the famous E3 trailer. Even though updates have improved the game, No Man's Sky's reputation will always be tarnished by the lies of the developers. They turned No Man's Sky into one man's lie. Um, I, I worry about, like, disappointing people, you know. The addition of Killzone 2 to this list is a bit of a stretch, but we want to add it anyway, because it's a textbook example of how game trailers can mislead an audience. At E3 2005, Sony showed the game for the very first time. Big Shot Jack Dretton told the press that it's real gameplay. It's definitely real. I guess we're pretty good at keeping secrets because the dev kits were out there. The dev kits are very intuitive, so people did some incredible things. And that's one thing Ted wanted to make sure everybody understood. That is real right. gameplay everybody's seeing out there. Uh, and I think the other advantage... So it is have, gameplay. All that stuff it is, is all gameplay. gameplay. Gamers worldwide were totally hyped to play Killzone 2 like it was shown in the trailer. Even for today's consoles, the pre-rendered footage of Killzone 2 was impressive. It should not come as a surprise that Guerrilla Games had trouble living up to that promise. The final version of the PS3 shooter tried to mimic the footage, but didn't match the intensity of the pre-rendered trailer. In 2012, Ubisoft revealed one of the most awesome-looking open-world games of the year. Watch Dogs looked beautiful, but the final result was far less impressive. Over the years, Ubisoft has made a habit out of making a game trailer as gorgeous as possible. However, the final game would be downgraded in order for it to work on current consoles. The downgrade on Watch Dogs was significant and made the game far less impressive. Not only graphically, but also in its gameplay, the open-world hacking game was just a lesser version of its 2012 E3 demo. It was a rough start for a new franchise, and judging by the sales numbers of Watch Dogs 2, gamers didn't forgive Ubisoft for burning them with the first one. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nate. Really. Come here. Got him. Watch Dogs wasn't the only game that Ubisoft downgraded before release. Rainbow Six Siege looked far less impressive when it was released, as it really lost a lot of detail. And even though The Division was a commercially successful game, it did not match the footage we saw in its first trailer. And then there's Far Cry 4. This gorgeous looking game looks amazing, but its trailers looked even better. The developers clearly cut down the draw distance and environmental details. And Ubisoft is not the only publisher doing this. Bethesda's Rage looked amazing in the trailers, but was kind of dull when you got your hands on it. And even a praised game like Dark Souls 2 looked much better in its trailers than it did when it was released. Oh! 
Do you feel like game developers ever lie to you? What are your experiences with these shady marketing techniques? Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Anytime now that if I see a negative comment or something like that on the internet or from anyone in the industry or something like that, I just say like, oh, they're good underneath it though, you know, like, <laughs> you know, they don't mean it, you know. Um,